Okay, so in number five, we're going to start to analyze when you have a vertical dilation and a horizontal dilation, when are they equal to each other? And you can do this for all types of functions, and we'll do it here for a cubic function. So when does this happen? Well, c times f of x equals f of cx. Well, in this case, f of x is x cubed, so it's c times x cubed, and that equals cx cubed, where we're inputting the c and the x. So on the left-hand side, nothing is changing, but over here, we can cube our c, and we can cube our x. And then we can keep simplifying. Let's get zero on one side. So we have c times x cubed minus c cubed x cubed, and that equals zero. Now we have uh, a function. I want to know when uh, we get zero here to solve it. So I'm just going to uh, factor out my x cubed here. And then I've got c minus c cubed, and that equals zero. And then c is a common factor, so I factor that out. c times x cubed uh, times 1 minus c squared. And that's the same thing as cx cubed times 1 minus c times 1 plus c, and that equals zero. So in this case, c times x cubed could be 0, 1 minus c, and 1 plus c. They could all be 0. And that tells me that in the first case, um, c could be 0 itself. So c could be 0. And in this case, both the horizontal uh, and vertical dilations would be equal to each other. And in the second case, c could be 1, and then c could be negative 1. In all of those cases, for this function, for those values of c, your horizontal and vertical dilations are exactly equal. So then, I mean, that's when c is equal. But maybe the next question is, well, if you've got here at h of x equals f of 2x, if you've got that horizontal dilation, how can you represent it as a vertical dilation? That's kind of the next thing to think about. So how can we do that? Well, we have h of x, and that equals f of 2x which is 2x cubed. So 2 is cubed, 8x is cubed, x, x cubed. And that tells you right away what you could do. If you look at this, you can see that x cubed is just f of x. So it's the same thing as 8 times f of x. And that would be our vertical dilation that would equal our horizontal dilation. So in this case, 8 times fx does equal f of 2x. And again, that makes sense because the 2 is being cubed. And in general, I mean, if you want to say it generally, f of cx equals c cubed times f of x. That's all that's happening there. Right? We're cubing that c value. Now, how does, this, um, how does this work out with other functions? Well, they're all different. They all have different intricacies that are fun to look at here. But in 7, we've got Darth Vader. He says that f of x equals the absolute value of x. Then f of cx equals c times f of x for all real values of c. Is this true? Create an argument to support your answer. Is it true? No. If we look at this, we're saying, well, f of cx equals c times f of x. Well, we're looking at the absolute value, right? So this is the absolute value of cx equals c times the absolute value of x. Now, that's only going to be true if c is positive, if c is greater than 0. Uh, yes, greater than or equal to 0. If it's negative, it's not going to work. So for example, let's say you have f of the absolute value of negative 2 times x versus negative 2 times f of x. This is different because on the left-hand side, we have the absolute value of 2x. On the right-hand side, we have negative 2 times the absolute value of x. And on the left-hand side here, the absolute value would be applied to your negative 2, and that would mean that this is the absolute value of 2x, which is different from negative 2 times the absolute value of x. Those are clearly not equal to each other. Right, so this does not work when c is negative. It is cool, though, that it works for all positive values. You can test that out here, but you can see it also in the algebraic statement. Okay, and number eight. If f of x equals x squared, for what real values of c? So we're looking at other, other uh, 
other functions and generalizing when the horizontal and the vertical dilations are equal. So f of cx are horizontal. When does it equal our vertical? Well, again, in this case, f of x is x squared. So this is c times x squared on the right. And on the left, it's going to be c squared x squared because we're squaring our input. And now I'll write it this way, c squared x squared minus, I'm going to subtract this term on both sides, minus c times x squared, and that equals 0. Then let's factor out c x squared. And what you're left with is c minus 1. Right. Now here, this tells me that c could be 0 or c could be 1. In either case, the horizontal and vertical dilations are equal to each other. And here in number 9 is a typo. Oh, no, it's not a typo. Whew. Okay, good. <laughs> um, too many typos this time. For what real values of c does f of cx equal the opposite of c times f of x. So you can play around with these relationships and explore different connections between your horizontal and vertical. And that's all we're doing here. So let's discover it. On the left hand side, it's c squared, x squared. And on the right hand side, it's the opposite of c times x squared. If we add cx squared to both sides, we have c squared, x squared plus cx squared equals zero. And then we can factor out, well, what's the common factor here? It's cx squared. And then what's left? Well, you're going to have a c plus 1. So this is going to work when c is 0, okay, and when c is negative 1. And you can test it out. Um, these graphs will equal each other. All right, so that's just playing around with some of the flexibility between horizontal and vertical dilations. I hope you enjoyed it.